I mean, isn't that what ketchup pretty much is? Tomato blood? I don't even know where we're starting off on this. But anyway, welcome to another edition of Movie Stop. It's Saturday. Uh, Saturday night, actually, because uh, it was a pretty busy Saturday for me. I saw two movies, uh, one in theaters and one on HBO Max. Uh, I'm gonna go briefly into both of these movies. I'm not gonna try. I'm gonna try to avoid spoilers on both of them because uh, these are two. Re of course, these are two recent movies, and these are two films that a lot of people are still going to be able to see, going to see. Especially the one, the first movie I'm gonna talk about. Uh, so I saw the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die, which is Daniel Craig's last movie. I don't need to. It's, it's not really much of a spoiler. I mean, it's been pretty much said that this is his final movie, and. Um, I'm not going to go into the entire James Bond movie movies series and pick my favorite one because I mean that's kind of hard to that's kind of hard to decide the the best overall James Bond movie. So I'll just briefly talk about the Daniel Craig movies real quick. Uh, I really like Casino Royale. I think most people would have the same agreement to that. I like Casino Royale. Quantum of Souls I thought was just okay. I know a lot of people are kind of mixed on it, but I just thought it was all right. Uh, it was one of those movies that was affected by the writer's strike of that of uh, 2007, so makes sense. Uh, Skyfall, I think, is the best one of the best Daniel Craig movie that, up to this point. I think that one was the best one overall, director, directed by Sam Mendes. And then Spectre was w the worst one of that series, and that was also directed by Sam Mendes, too. Uh, Spectre, I think, was a little too... It's got a little too... Is it got a little too cocky with itself. Like there were p parts of that mo there were a lot of times in that movie when you watch it, and you feel like that, wow, you guys really are full of yourselves. Like you really think that this is gonna work as a film. Like I thought it was a little. I thought it was a little too. It was a little too silly, especially for Daniel Craig, who had who has been a really good serious James Bond. In this mo in this movie, it makes him. Look, is there are times when he's doing the typical James Bond thing, and he looks like a creep while doing it, too. Like, like stuff like that. I thought Christoph Waltz's Blofeld in The Inspector was pretty bad. And just that movie overall was a real disappointment. I walked out of that movie thinking to myself, wow, you really missed the mark on this movie. And, I w and uh, No Time to Die now comes out. It's been delayed, of course, because of the pandemic. It, um... And it's finally here. We've waited so long for it. It was one of the first movies to be postponed because of the pandemic. And I can honestly say, after watching it, it did not disappoint at all. It was a really, really good movie. Is it Skyfall good? It's pretty close. I'm not going to say it's a perfect James Bond movie, but it's definitely a gr a really more a more enjoyable movie than Spectre was. So I just realized that I was not recording. I was talking about the movie, and then I looked at my camera, and I realized that I was not recording anything that I was saying. But So uh, uh, I'm going to try to sum it up real quick. But like I said, Spectre was really a disappointment, but No Time to Die really takes a lot of the elements that didn't work in Spectre and brings it back to what made them work in Casino Royale and in Skyfall. And it's funny because you know how people used to say the Star Trek sequels the odd number movies were not that good, but the even numbered sequels were very good. It's kind of like that here with the Daniel Craig movies. The odd number, except the odd number ones are the better films. The even number films are not the best ones. And what I like about this movie is that it does give Daniel Craig a proper send off to his character, which doesn't really usually happen with these movies with the James Bond movies. I don't think Sean. I think Sean Connery is the only one who really got a proper send off. But even then. I think Never Say Never Again was not even a part of this company, the Eon Productions company. I think that was produced outside of them. Uh, Roger Moore, I know, didn't, didn't get a proper send-off. Timothy Dalton didn't get a proper send-off, although his movies that... I will say those Dalton movies have actually gotten a lot better over time. And I know Pierce Brosnan didn't get a proper send-off with his films, but seeing that they actually gave this character, that Daniel, the Daniel Craig James Bond, a proper send-off, it's an interesting move, and I think it does pay off in a good way. And I like the new characters they add in here. Uh, Lashana Lynch, Lashana Lynch in this is very good. I liked Anna De Armas. I liked uh, Rami Malik, even though I think he was the weak link. I don't think he was a bad villain overall, but I think he was kind of a, a bland, generic villain in a way. Uh, the action sequences are very good, and uh, they really did fix a lot of the problems that Spectre had. I think this is really a well done movie. It's a great way to say goodbye to Daniel Craig as James Bond. And, it's, and it makes you curious about where they're going to go from here. I will say my one 
criticism towards the film is that it runs a little bit long at about almost three hours. Uh, I think 163 minutes, but it's not it's not bad to the point where you will you, it, you hate the movie overall. But overall, it's a good mo- It's a really good movie. I had a really good time with it, and like I said, it's going to be interesting to see where they take James Bond in this day and age. Like what the next movies will lead to. Uh, I highly recommend this movie. I think people should go see it. I think a lot of people will. Uh, it's definitely one of the better outings in the series. Probably one of my favorite movies of the year so far. And, um, yeah, it's a good way to end the, this le- this 15-year journey Daniel Craig has been on. Because it's hard to believe 15 years. Casino Royale came out 2006, and now here we are in 2021. And I think they deliver a very strong finale to this to Daniel Craig's time as Bond. And like I said, I'm very curious to see where they're going to go from here. So I highly recommend this movie. I definitely say check it out. And the other new movie that I saw this week, which I saw on HBO Max, is The Many Saints of Newark, which is the Sopranos prequel, which stars uh, Michael Gandolfini, the son of T- the son of James Gandolfini, playing Tony Soprano. And this is a prequel, basically telling you the story of how he how he came to be, how he became the the Tony Soprano that we knew from the TV series. And when it comes to Sopranos, I keep getting distracted. Uh, I had to take a phone call there, but basically, this takes place in the 1960s. This takes place years is over 30 years before the Sopranos TV series itself. And as far as the Sopranos series itself goes, I watched it with my dad a lot, but I never really got into the entire series itself. I wanted to. I never just got around to watching the entire series in full, which I probably could do because I could just watch it on HBO Max. Uh, the movie itself, this movie itself is okay. I think most people, I think most people have the same feeling that it's just okay. I think the performances in the movie are very good. I really do like, uh, Michael Gandolfini as Tony, and I, th- is I thought he did a very good job filling that role that his dad played in the TV series very well. I mean, uh, I liked him, I liked Alessandro Nivola, who plays, um, uh, what's his name... I'm forgetting his name now. Uh, Dickie Multisanti. Multisanti. Yeah, I thought he was very good in there. Uh, this is a really good cast, too. Leslie Odom Jr.'s in this. John Barenthal, Corey Stahl, uh, Billy Magnuson, Vera Farmiga, Ray Liotta. They have a really good cast in here. And like I said, I think the movie is very good. Is good. I feel like it could be a lot better. But then again, like I said, I haven't watched The Sopranos regularly, so maybe if I was more of a fan of the TV, maybe if I watched it more, I would probably appreciate it more. It does have those elements where they like try to cram in as many references to the show as they can, can at times, where it doesn't kind of fit re- very well. It's very uneven. There's kind of a lot of choppiness too. I feel like they should have made this movie kind of like a, kind of like a Once Upon a Time in America type of film, where you, it's like a definitive crime. Er- crime epic, like a big big scale movie of the t- of the time period or something like The Godfather where it's kind of like a big crime epic film from the time period or Goodfellas, something like that but for what they do here, I think they did a serviceable job, could it have been a lot better? Absolutely, I feel like if I was more into the series, I'd probably get into it more, but like I said it's not a bad movie, it's a very well made film for the most part, I feel like it could have been a lot better and I feel like they could have really done a lot more had they been given more. Is had a, is I feel like there could have been a lot more to it. Like they could have made it stand out a little bit better than the TV series did. But overall, I did really enjoy it. I'd probably watch it again. I'll probably is I probably will do like a marathon of the series and then watch the movie itself afterwards and see if I, that helps. But but yeah, overall, it's a decent film. It could have been a lot better, absolutely. But for what it is, it's good. Honestly, from this director, Alan Taylor, I feel like it's his, it's the better of his movies that he's directed because the last two movies he did, Thor The Dark World and Terminator Genesis, which doesn't really say a whole lot to your credibility as a filmmaker. Even though this guy's a really good TV director, he, is, he's, like, he's done like a ton of great ton of episodes of classic shows, Lost, The West Wing, uh, Mad Men, Boardwalk Empire, Game of Thrones. So the guy's clearly a very good director TV-wise, movie-wise... Not so much, but this is probably the best movie he's directed as a fi- as a film as a movie director, not a t- as a movie director. So there's at least that. So that's it. That's it for this episode. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. If you want to see 
more videos like this, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button right there. Check out a previous episode here. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So until then, take care.